it's Mandy from Designs by Miss Mandy. I recently took a poll to see which topics my followers were most interested in learning about, and today's topic was by far the most requested. So let's spend some time together going over some design tips for making your own stencils. I'll walk you through my process from start to finish, and then we'll see how it turns out. So let's get started. The design I'll be making today is a sea turtle stencil. With all the dreary weather we've been having in northern Utah, I'm dreaming of an island getaway, so that's why we're doing a sea turtle today. So the first thing to do is to create your stencil shape. I'm going to go over here and grab my rectangle tool. Unlike most cut file designs where the design itself is your final shape, when doing stencils the negative spaces or smaller shapes cut out of the larger shape are your design. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create a stencil that's about 5 by 7. And you can always go back and change the size later on if you choose to. Okay, next I've imported a sketch of a sea turtle I did earlier. And as I did this sketch, um, I had the finished product of a stencil in mind. So instead of drawing a sea turtle shape and then tracing the details on top of it to be cut out like I normally would if I were doing a vinyl or paper cut design, I had to keep in mind that this design would essentially be made of holes within a larger shape. So that's how I like to think of it. Um, basically what you would be doing if you were cutting it out by hand. Whether you're sketching or using an image for reference, I find that it helps to keep that in mind. Just that you're basically drawing these to be holes. So I'm going to start by using the pen tool and you can find that over here in your toolbar or you can just click the letter P as a shortcut. I'm just going to use my pen tool to start tracing out my shape. Alright, so I just finished up my sea turtle design, finished sketching it with my pen tool. Now I'll hide my image real quick so you can see what I've done. So I actually only did half of the image because I want it to be symmetrical. So now I'm going to select all of it um, and then just hit Command C for copy and then Command F for paste in front. Right click and hit transform, reflect, make sure it's on uh, vertical, press OK. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make sure that I all my points meet up correctly. There we go. Took me a couple tries, but I got it. Okay. Um, now I'm going to select all of it and change it from outlines to fill. Looking good. And now I'm going to um, hit go to Pathfinder. And if you don't have that, you can go to Window and then click on Pathfinder. And then you're going to hit this first one, which is Unite. What that did is all these little shapes in the center are now connected and everything has been placed into a group. So now I have a whole group of shapes. So now there's just one more step I need to do with my turtle design and that is to make it a compound path by going to object and then compound path and make or hitting command 8. Okay and if you saw my layers I'll do it again. You show it was a group and now it's a compound path. So that means all of these um, can no longer be separated, at least not easily. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to change my sea turtle design to white and then move it on top of my stencil shape that I created earlier. There we go. And then I thought it would be fun to add some words to this stencil. So I have some over here that I typed up earlier, it just says beach bum. And um, I just use the font that's it's called Catch Feels Regular. And I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. Um, and to just make this a little bit more fun, let's see. I'm going to actually put this on a curve. So let me change it to white. 
And then using my pen tool, I'm just going to draw a little curved line. And you can adjust that with your white arrow tool if it's not quite the way you want it the first time. I'm definitely going to have to make this smaller to fit. <coughs> then I'm just going to <coughs> sorry, um, press Command C to copy it. And then I'm going to press T to change to my type tool. Or you can click on it over here in the toolbar. And when you do that and you hover over a line, you'll notice that it changes from being um, just a regular type tool to um, wanting to connect to the line shape. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the left side of this line and then hit Command V for paste. So my text is a little large, so I'm going to scale it down. And then I'm going to actually use the baseline uh, shift right here to make it so that the letters are centered on the line. This was a tool I actually didn't know about for a long time. Um, anyway, I'm going to kern the letters out a little bit so that they have some more space between them. Okay, that looks pretty cute. All right, so we have the text the way we want it, and now I'm going to change it from a uh, type to um, outlines. So you're going to go to type, and then you're going to go to create outlines, and um, there we go. So now there's one more thing we have to do. Actually, a couple things. So with all of this selected, both the turtle and your letters, and I'll go over here to layers panel so you can see, this one still needs, to, they both need to still be uh, made into a compound path. So I can do that by hitting Command 8. Okay. And then by selecting both and doing the same thing. So now these are both connected. So hopefully you have it exactly where you want it because it's a little harder to move it around after that. Okay, and with that, I just have one more problem that I need to address. So some of these letters, like the B and the A and the E, have these little solid shapes um, within the letters called counters, and we need to clean those up real quick before we can uh, make this into a real stencil. Otherwise, these little things will just fall off since I'm going to be making my stencil out of um, a solid material. And so um, one way you can do this is just by... Uh, making sure that the letters are connected in some way to the rest of the stencil. So I'm just going to go through and kind of clean up these counters, making these little shapes to go over the top of them um, using my pen tool. Alright, now we should be good to go. I'm actually going to move this over to a gray background just really quick so you can see what is going on. So I have all of my white shapes which are connected. They're all a compound path over the top of my teal shape and I am going to go to Pathfinder and I'm going to click on uh, minus front which is the second um, shape mode. So as you can see it turned it from just being white shapes on top of this uh, teal shape to actually being cut out. And then I have all of my other little pieces still over the top of this. And you can see that it's a group and it's not a compound path because we have some of those um, little counter shapes that we need to, to address. So if I select all of those, go to Pathfinder and click Unite, then we should, if we did it right, have one compound path, which is exactly what we want. And um, if you ever do want to change the shape of the stencil after you've already done this, you can just use your white arrow selection tool to go through and um, change the size a little bit. Maybe give yourself a little bit more room on this side. 
Anyway, you can make it whatever size you want as long as it'll fit in your cutting machine. Okay, so if you're happy with the way your stencil looks, then I'm just gonna clean up the rest of my file, getting rid of my background images and any other text I might have laying around, and I'm just going to save this. as an SVG file. So after everything's cleaned up and saved, we're going to bring the file into Design Space to cut it out. So I'm here in Cricut Design Space and I have a new canvas. I'm going to click Upload an Image. Find where I saved it. There it is. And insert it. Okay, everything looks good. We're ready to go. And I'm just going to hit make it. Select your material size. And let's see how it turns out. All right, let's see how this turned out. Okay, so for my material, I've just been using, I use Duralar, and I got a whole like pack of it off of Amazon one time, and I've just still been making use of that. So that's the material I used. And then for my cut settings, I just had it set to um, stencil film um, on my Cricut. And then, yeah, and I just used a regular fine point blade. So let's see how it turned out. Hopefully that's not too hard to see with it being clear, but um, turned out really well. I'll just have to go through and uh, weed out all the little pieces and, and then it would be good to go. So we've got ourselves a cute little beach bum stencil that you can use for all sorts of things. Super fun. So thanks for watching this video and have fun making your very own custom stencil designs. If you have any requests for future video topics, be sure to let me know.